Hello, uh, Martin Contois here, uh, MC Starman, with my uh, dear friend Tamara Segal. Um, in Everyone. Prince, in, Prince Edward, uh, uh, in Prince Edward County in Ontario, and I'm in um, Duncan on Vancouver Island. And uh, this is our third episode of what I called uh, uh, an alchemy of herbalism and astrology. And uh, we've had uh, two beautiful conversations. And then we decided to talk today about Mars. And so we're going to look at Mars in our current times and what's happening with Mars. Mars is getting ready to go into Aries. And so we'll go into details. Uh, but how you been doing, Tamara? I've been doing great. I've been um, just spending a lot of my time, anytime I have outdoors in the gardens, getting big gardens going and working with the land here and feeling really grateful for it. Um, you know, feeling, hoping, hoping for a good productive season of, of growth. So you're also uh, getting ready to, to start your, your courses. I am. We're, we're generally doing a bunch of work here around the farm um, because, yeah, the season is starting where we have people coming out for classes that I teach. Um, uh, and then also we run some events here, uh, Chris, my husband, Chris and I uh, around um, wild foods and medicines. And, and um, he's a chef and he teaches people about uh, cooking and prepares these um, these beautiful uh, dinner events that uh, that focus on some of the wild foods that grow around here so we have a lot of stuff to to do around just yeah like uh, preparing the land and the outbuildings and the spaces for uh, for welcoming people and it starts in like oh boy like 10 days so yeah <laughs> it's, uh, it's easy. Really, really feels very martian no? mars is definitely constellated and then We'll talk about the Mars Jupiter conjunction. Um, it's exciting to, it's an exciting time, huh? It feels uh, like we're all stepping into our power much more, huh? I am feeling that. Yeah, you know, uh, stepping into our power and engaging with. Um with the energy, there's kind of an increasing energy around that uh, happens with the springtime. Yeah, how, how has it been for you? What's, uh, what's been going on there? A lot of gestation with everything that's been going on in Pisces, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, I, I kind of describe what I've been going through as a, as, as a deep process of renewal and, and, uh, and, uh, how uh, how Pisces is, you know, there's uh, something really deeply difficult about Pisces energy. I, I came up with a little set, you know, poetic sentence of there's something really creative and, uh, you know, in the concept of despair, you know, so, mm. so sounds, you know, and so you know, although this year the the Mars, the the Aries energy took more time, it felt like with all the concentrations of planets in Pisces that we've had over the course of spring, it's been a super cool and wet kind of spring, and and it's reflected in my own consciousness. It's very fertile mm -hmm. and yet very depressive. Mm. So it's it's kind of a getting a bit of a slower start we could use some of the active mars energy to kind of stimulate a little more and, and heat things up a little <laughs> absolutely do you feel that the spring is a little late the, your growing season a little late in in over there yeah yeah it has been late um we, we did have uh we did have some hot days last week here in ontario and it was the first ones that we got and then suddenly everything went crazy it was you know a few days we were out of town for a couple of days and we came back and it was like oh my god the, everything's changed all the the trees are budding out and the grass we just cut is 
huge again. And, you know, um, but uh, so the slow spring in, in, in a way is a blessing uh, to try to get to have more time to get the gardens and everything ready and planted and, and the stuff that you're clearing away clear, whatever, uh, without it overwhelming you. Um, so I've been appreciating that aspect of it. Although um, I really noticed the difference between when it's hot and, and I just am so um, receptive to the heat it totally energizes me and I you know like I tend to run right. cold and so when, I, when it warms up I'm like okay I'm open and I can just get right out of bed and get going in my bare feet and you know and then uh, and then it gets cold again and it's like oh no okay right right <laughs> Have well, a that's, bath that's, and <laughs> wrap myself up in blankets. And so, well, yeah. uh, on the island here, we're used to having, you know, an early spring. And then this year, it's, you know, we all, you know, like the growing season is about three, four weeks behind all the growing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been like that here. But it's amazing. You get like a few days of some powerful, warm sun and everything just catches up. I guess because also the angle of the sun is, is, is already calling for blooms and you know <laughs> a certain stage of growth so as soon as the heat matches that it's like wow like overnight it's amazing so fast which well, is uh you know very martian let's look at that from a from an astrological perspective and look at let's look at mars so you know this is what we're discussing today and so mm. here's uh, uh some pictures of mars in woodcuts uh, from ancient times and um so we have, um, um, you know, the, the ruler of Scorpio and the ruler of Aries. And we talk and we're going to talk a little bit about the ram. And uh, we see the, you know, the, the, the god of Mars, the god of war um, mm -hmm. and, and all of that's attributed to, to Mars. And then um, in terms of the astrology of it, so here I have three mm -hmm. charts for May 19th, May 25th, and May 29th. We're May 19th <clears> today <throat> as we're recording mm -hmm. this, and we've been uh, having a Mars-Neptune conjunction. And mm -hmm. what I was talking about when we were getting started here is that uh, all throughout spring, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Neptune, I've been in Pisces and we've just had this uh, incredible conjunction of uh, Mar uh, of uh, Jupiter and Neptune, but also Jupiter, Venus and Neptune have been in conjunction. And then now, you know, recently we've had a Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, triple conjunction. And now this is the last of the Neptunian conjunction. So that's the that's today and Mars Neptune is very interesting archetypally in terms of and, and we can talk about that mm -hmm. but also but also on the 25th here Mars comes into Aries and now we have Mars uh, Jupiter Venus Chiron and 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 uh, and and Venus in Aries you know so now you know, we can really see that the energy mm -hmm. is starting to shift into a very Martian, uh, you know, Mars coming into its own sign. And then uh, on May 29th, right before the new moon and right before uh, Mercury turns direct, we have a Jupiter-Mars conjunction. Mm -hmm. and, and that to me, I think that uh, that feels really hot. Um, and and kind of stormy hot in a sense, you know. So that's um, that's kind of what uh, led us to want to talk about Mars. And uh, you know, so I outlined a lot right there. Um, mm -hmm. How you've been feel so so what is um, so what is Mars for you uh, tomorrow? I mean, and we can talk about you know the you know how to support one's Mars, and we can look at you know, from a purely psychological perspective, what is the function of Mars, but you had some interesting uh, uh, musing in your dream time uh, that you wanted to share with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and even, even that time of day is kind of has this Martian energy. So um, 
Yeah, what I uh, what I was sharing a little earlier, I'll just catch up our viewers here, is, um, you know, I've been finding, uh, particularly over the last several months or so, for me, that um, that space in the morning when you wake up and you're still in bed, you've just woken up and you're semi still in dream space, but you're also more conscious, that a lot of things have come through really strongly for me in that space. Um, into my consciousness, either pieces that I was dreaming or something that comes into my head just right then. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of me that says, pay attention to this. And I, there's a part of me that knows that whatever's coming through at that time is really tr truth. And it's coming from something like not necessarily anything that I've been thinking about consciously. So this morning that happened and it was, um, and, and, and later on, when when we uh, just before we started recording here, we were talking a little bit about Mars and I realized, hey, what was coming through for me had a bit to do with the energy of Mars. So um, what came through were, was uh, an expression in Hebrew that comes from, I don't know where, maybe the Passover Haggadah or like a prayer. I don't know. I kind of was, I come from a Jewish tradition that I was pretty well educated in growing up. And so it sort of makes up part of my, my thing, even though I'm, I'm not really particularly like practicing religiously uh, in that way these days. Um, but, but also I am, um, I was schooled in Hebrew in the, in the Hebrew language. And so, um, so these his Hebrew expression, Zroa Netuya came to me. And then I thought about it and I was like, okay, that means something about Zroa is like the, um, it is, I know it from Passover, it's the shank bone of the ram that's placed on a Seder plate that's supposed to rec represent an ancient sacrifice that was made. And I don't know exactly where that came from. Um, there's, there are theories about it, but um, the sacrifice of the ram was supposed to acknowledge that time of year um, at uh you know, going back previous would relate to the pagan uh, traditions of the um, spring equinox, which resonates with that time of year when Passover and Easter are celebrated. Um, and, uh, and it is, um, it is in the sign of it's when the sun is in the sign of Aries and um, the moon Passover always happens at the full moon of Libra. Um, so it's uh, the moon is opposite the sun and the sun is in Aries. Um, and so I realized, okay, so that's the shank bone of the ram. And Netuya, though, that means planted. And I had this idea that the ram, there's this, we have this, these old associations with the ram and the planting um, uh, in biodynamics. Uh, there's a practice of uh, burying a ram's horn filled with manure and certain preparations, and you bury it at one equinox, and then you take it out and mix it with water and create a vortex and mix it around at the next equinox. And then that becomes a preparation that's spread on the land and it's supposed to bring fertility. So the ram's horn has this association with the equinoxes of spring and fall and with fertility. And then there's this expression of Zroa Netuya, so planting of the of the ram's horn, or of the not the ram's horn, in this case the shank bone, but the, you know, this bone of the ram. And so I went and I looked it up in my Hebrew English dictionary. And actually the association of the word um, zroa and all its roots has to do not only with the shank bone, but it also has to do with sowing, strewing of seeds. And that was what had come to me. I realized this expression has to do with planting seeds. And later when we started talking about Mars and I realized, right, Mars is the ruler of Aries, which is the ram. Um, there is this association um, with planting. And so we think of, you know, fertility as being, you know, the earth should be fertile and it takes up and, you know, or like a woman is fertile. And the, the earth and the feminine is sort of Venus ruled. It's the receptive and it's the fertile and it develops growth. But the planting, the sowing of the seed that of course is Mars. And we can see that with the arrow that, that in the glyph 
the, with the arrow that sends forth that, um, that energy, strewing, sending it, you know, um, sending it outwards, and then it lands, and then it grows. It's the same with the pollinator, wind pollinator plants that send their pollen out on the wind, and then they land on other plants that will receive them <coughs> and seeds can be developed and so it is the it's the force behind fertility which is the masculine concept bringing the seed right and the feminine receives it right. so that's you know we're feeling that these days as we're as we're planting gardens and um you absolutely know. absolutely yeah. it's it's interesting you know because uh, as I, i'm listening you talk you know you get a sense that we're exploring the deeply mythological core of what astrology is in mm. in her book uh, um the astrology of fate liz green describes the signs as uh, from a mythological perspective and she describes Aries as um, the the quest for the golden fleece, you know, which is a ram's uh, 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 skin, you know, and and the association with uh, the early um, sacrifices of the ram and how the ram was uh, a teriomorphic, teriomorphic meaning an animal conception of god and and you know you know we we've been living through the age of pisces and we're on our way to becoming to going into the age of aquarius but before the age of pisces was the age of aries and which was mm -hmm. the age of the ram and so mm -hmm. we have in mythology we have the 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 um the the um, the the god of uh, uh, the Egyptian that has a goat head, a, a ram head, uh, Anubis, and and we have uh, so many different conceptions, uh, and then the you know so the sacrifice of the masculine god to renew the land, this, these have been uh, celebrations that have been handed out to us, and then even in 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 uh, celtic and pagan religions we have the the may pole uh, and the may day celebrations uh, that are associated so we have the ram and we have the bull the ram is is ruled by mars the 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 bull is ruled by venus mm. and, and so then you we looked earlier about you know the the opposition of Aries to Libra. Libra is also ruled by Venus. And then the opposite of Taurus is also is Scorpio, which is also ruled by Mars. So these two months, you know, of Aries and Taurus are strongly related to, to, um, to the harvest festivals uh, of in, in, um, as you were saying in Libra and also in Scorpio and 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 the day of the dead and you know every you know life and death is really celebrated in that relationship between Venus and Mars and so uh -huh. that really goes deep into into the history of the development of the of the human psyche huh Absolutely. And, you know, and of course, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's going to be um, the opposite. You're going to have the fall in, the, in our spring, and the, you know, but it's the same death rebirth um, process. And, you know, when I was saying before that, um, like, I didn't know if I fully carried it through that, you know, that space between when you're, you're asleep and you're just waking up, you know, and that that's become a really potent space for me. Um, relating that to to this concept i was thinking you know that's the space between dormancy and life and the time where we're taking things in and now we're getting up and putting things out so we've been asleep and now we're awake and now we're going to bring our energy into the world that's the crossover space and that's where the seeds get planted that then get carried forth into the awake time so it is a kind of it's a bit of a melding of the mars venus kind of 
time at that time of day. And it would be the same when you're about to fall asleep at night. Some people maybe have had the experience. I know I have had like when I'm falling asleep, if there's something that I've forgotten to do that I really need to do, it might come in right at that time. And, you know, hopefully right. it doesn't happen to me too often, but every now and then it's like, oh, shoot, I got to, you know, and you, like you kind of spring back to life and you think, oh, I've got to do this right now. Or, you know, or I need to make sure that I write it down. So that first thing tomorrow, I do, you know, and it's so it's like that other space of I've been active and now I'm going into the receptive one more thing for the active you need to you know what you're sort of opening up what what's you know for whatever is to come in and there's that space and so it's the same kind of thing like and it and so it relates to sleep wakefulness death rebirth um receptive versus um versus you know giving out and so this is the mars venus paradox and interestingly, I feel like, you know, it also brings to mind for me um, the Pluto concept, which we've talked about in other times, but Pluto really representing death and rebirth, the building and the destructive kind of carrying right. both of those things. And of course, Pluto is the other ruler of Scorpio alongside Mars. So it resonates there. Um, but the Mars Venus is a lot more, it almost feels like Pluto brings in connects us with the archetypal a little more whereas Mars and Venus are like you know they're closer planets and they're more about our well how this is all affecting us in the day to day I don't well know Mars and Venus you know are essentially you know functions of our psyche that we're much more conscious of you know the how you know mm. Venus is what we love Mars is how we express our will into the world and, and these functions, you know, it is very difficult for most people to connect with Pluto in, in their own psyche because Pluto is outside the psyche, right? It's a collective, well, mm. it's not outside the, the psyche, but it's in the collective unconscious, you know? It's not, you know, it's, it's my ancestral connections, it's, mm. it's, it's my ancestral rage, it's my... It's, 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 a uh, you know, I, I affectionately call Pluto the rage of the great mother, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, I quote you, know, you on that a lot. <laughs> actually. <laughs> well, it actually comes, it actually comes from, from Liz Green and, and, and her book, Astrology okay. of Fate. But let's, let's, uh, let's look at the archetype, you know, of Mars, because it's so powerful mm -hmm. right now. And as mm -hmm. Mars, you know, being in conjunction with Neptune right now, and then Mars is going to be entering into Aries, to me, that's going to really shift the energies and especially that Mars Jupiter. So, so I wanted to look at the, the psychological functions, you know, so in, 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 Jung, um, in Jung's work, um, in, in his alchemical work, uh, Jung deals with these archetypes, these planetary archetypes, and he speaks of of Mars as the planet responsible for for individuation, and and that's mm -hmm. very interesting, you know. So 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 in our cosmology, we have you know the Earth and the Moon that turns around the Earth and the Earth that turns around the Sun. Now between the Earth. And, and the moon and the sun, there's two planets. There's Mercury and Venus. And Mercury mm. and Venus, their function is to support the union of the moon and the sun. So they, you know, they're, they're in between the moon and the sun. They're in between the earth and the sun. Mars is mm -hmm. the first planet that is outside of the orbit of the earth and so then the glyph you got the circle which is the sun and the arrow which means okay now i project myself into the outer world you know then comes jupiter then comes saturn and then the saturnian the trans saturnian planet the transpersonal planet you know so the the limits of the ego ends with Saturn and Mars is the God that's responsible for expressing my will into the world. So, you know, you look at the sun being the, 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 
what I seek to shine into the world, my, my, my masculine urge to shine into the world. The moon is the reflective nature of the great mother, of the mother, of the personal mother, but also how I mother. And then Mercury, how I communicate, Venus, what it is that I love. And then Mars, okay, once these four planets have kind of discovered, you know, what, you know, what they're here to do, what they want to do, what they love, when they've talked about everything, then Mars is the one that actually gets the work done. Like you're saying, you know, sowing the seed, you know, once we've figured out what we're going to plant, Mars is the one that's going to go till the, the land, you know, so it's interesting how in our discussion, Mars really almost uh, um, has a, uh, you know, farming function. Huh? And it's interesting huh? because uh, in the earlier days, you know, the army was actually made up of the farmers. And whenever there was a war, the farmer would pick up his weapons and join the battle. But uh, during peacetime, he was a farmer. Right. So then Mars, mm -hmm. the farmer, so there is, yeah, there is that both creative and destructive force mm -hmm. that I think is, um, is significant there. Uh, and so we see with, so you were talking about um, how we have this polarity between Mars and Venus, the masculine and the feminine, and Mars being the ruler of Aries, the opposite pole on the wheel is Libra. And so then Libra is ruled by Venus. And we have Aries in the very beginning of spring at the turn of the, the spring equinox. And we have Libra at the turn of the autumn equinox. So um, in that sense, we have Mars acting as the fertility god, the, the, the spreader of the seed and bringing energy to new life. Once that seed gets planted, then the earth, you know, hugs it and uh, adorns it with all its gifts of, of minerals and nutrients and moisture, and it allows it to grow and develop and it nourishes it and it creates all this life. And so then that's the next phase when the sun moves from Aries into Taurus. And when the sun moves into Taurus, Taurus is ruled by Venus. And then on the opposite end of the year in the fall, we have the next sign over from Libra, which is Scorpio. And there Scorpio is ruled by Mars. So we have these two right beside each other in the spring and the fall. And it's like um, when uh, in the fall, when the sun's in Libra, we've moved past the fall equinox. And now it is the harvest season. Libra ruled by Venus is the bringer of abundance. There is the abundant harvest and we have all the corn and the apples and the, you know, the big harvest that is going to nourish us for the whole year. And there's so much abundance and we're so grateful and Thanksgiving and all of this. And then we move into Scorpio and it's like, now we stop harvesting. We let the plants die. We let the leaves fall. We let the trees go dormant. The earth goes into its sleep and the cold, the frosts come here in Canada and everything, all the life that was there, you know, your beautiful aromatic basil plants turn to mush and it's like, oh, and that Scorpio season is ruled by Mars and it's the destructive Mars. So we have Mars, the bringer of life in Aries, planting the seeds and bringing that energy of driving life forward. And then Venus carries it, produces the life. In Libra, we make the harvest and then Mars comes along again in Scorpio and tears it down. You get these storms and these frosts and now all that life is being destroyed. And of course, that death is necessary to become food for the new life that will grow again in the next season. Right. So, I mean, with the God of War, it's interesting because it's a, you know, it's a destructive force. And then if there's no war, then the, then the same people that were using weapons could, could use them to turn the earth and, and drive new life. 
when we talk about war in terms of warring between humans, it feel, I mean, to me, it feels like, well, I don't know what place that has. That feels like it's not as necessary, right, 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 you know, right. as the death process. But I don't know. I mean, one thing that happens with war, a good friend of mine who's very connected with them, with earth energies, I remember her once saying that, um, you know, the part of the reason maybe we have um, so much war is because the earth needs blood. And if women were more, uh, if they more regularly actually gave of their own blood, their menstrual blood back to the earth, there would be less need for war, which is an interesting thing to consider. <laughs> well, especially with, uh, with everything that's going on on the debate of abortion and all of that. But uh, let, 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 let's, let's again, let's, uh, let's try to focus on the energy on, uh, or our attention on what's going on right now and how to be best uh, resource the people. So we have this, this, this uh, you know, kind of this delayed spring and kind of this frustrated, you know, Mars in Pisces, which was really difficult. And then today we have this Mars-Neptune conjunction and then Mars mm. is coming into Aries so, you know, you know, the, the Mars is the call to the hero and the call to the renewal and, the, you know, so how do, you know, what are some of the herbs that, that uh, one would use to strengthen one's Mars and to strengthen one's mm -hmm. willpower? What, 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 uh, what, uh, what is your experience with that? Yeah, well, you know, so Mars is considered to be the masculine force. So it relates to that aspect within us on our mental, emotional, and our physical level. Um, it relates to the reproductive force, the energy between, behind reproductive health and you know, hormonal um, support for that. So that's a piece of Mars. Mars on the physical also really does relate to blood. Um, it's metal that it resonates with is iron, which the blood carries. And of course the blood is the life force. That is what is bringing new life. So on um, physical human reproduction, we have um, you know, the, the seed, the egg being fertilized, and then it is, you know, developed with blood within the, the mother's womb. And so, um, so this is a piece like uh, managing blood flow and circulation and building blood, making sure that there is enough, enough blood flow, enough iron. Um, if you have a depleted Mars physically, you might not have enough iron. You could be anemic mm. um, either because you're losing blood because you're bleeding somewhere somehow too much um, or because, you know, in some other way you're not getting or producing enough iron or absorbing it or whatever. Um, so that's a piece. Uh, and it, it is, it's driving the energy that allows you to deal with, you know, the demands of life because it's the energy mars is the active the energy that 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 makes you able to do things make things happen and so in that sense it has a relationship with the um the adrenal glands which are you know right at our core and allow us to respond to stressors um to the stresses of life and have the energy to manage that um, you know our adrenaline if we're under a lot of stress gets secreted there but also you know different stress hormones that allow us to adapt to whatever is coming at us and uh, so for a lot of people um, in these modern times they have adrenal issues where their adrenals are under functioning they're fatigued um, because people have you know there's so much stimulation all the time and there's so much demand on our energy uh, there can be a lot of stress uh, a lot of people are, 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 are dealing with from the, just the demands of their work life and their family life to like whatever personal issues they're going through to like financial issues to concerns about possible war or, you know, whatever, all the things that, uh, you know, these are all, all stressors on the system. So that's a piece dealing with the adrenal gland. So this is all issues of Mars. And so, um, you know, there are a number of different ways that we can support 
our Mars with, uh, with food and medicine. Um, and I, I can get into that. I don't know. Does that trigger anything? Does, do you have well, any? That, that, that definitely triggers something. And I want to ask you about that for sure. But then, you know, I was thinking as you were seeking and I was thinking of my own energy, you know, because, you know, Pisces is really important for me, you know, because I have my, you know, three planets there, my sun, Mercury and Venus. But, uh, you know, like the Mars conjunction with Neptune and Pisces, you know, then at that point, you know, the 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 mars function is not that strong huh and so no. then how do you boost up the blood how do you boost up <laughs> the iron what is and how do you support the adrenals yeah yeah so i think that um you know this is collectively to, to in whatever way we're all experiencing this as mars and neptune are conjunct because neptune is um, having the influence of dissolving and dissipating everything and turning everything into everything, all right. being connected and sending it away on the waters of life. And so this potency, this energy that is our individual selves that allows us to express ourselves in the world and can physically show up as our blood, our iron, um, also our muscles, our muscle mass, um, you know, this is, is being dissipated with this influence and particularly people who have a strong um, Piscean influence in their life, um, you know, which we both do, we might feel it even more. And thankfully, very soon, because Mars moves fairly quickly, it's going to move into Aries, uh, Mars will move into Aries and it'll express itself a lot more strongly. So um, right now, it feels like we are in this space of we're just waking up and we're still a little bit in sleep and the dream space is feeding into the uh, uh, conscious space and we need to make space for that even though Mars's desire is to go, go, go. It can't quite, but um, it can also have an effect of making people, diverting their attention, making them lose their focus, making them feel like they don't have enough energy or they just wanna sleep more or, you know, um, yeah, that kind absolutely. of thing, like a bit. Sorry. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, as you're speaking, you know, like that, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, my own symptoms of energy and the chi is just not, you know, it's kind of dissipated and watery and, mm. and, and, you know, with the big shift of Mars coming into Aries. So then, mm -hmm. you know, you know, of course, you know, nettle comes to mind in terms of, you know, really nurturing the, 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 the iron, um, mm -hmm. what are you know I mean I know iron is very difficult to to get into the blood if you are depleted in energy so what are some of the strategies that you use with your clients to help uh, to help integrate in. more iron yeah so yeah absolutely nettle really resonates with Mars because it's very high in iron and it builds the blood um, it has some of that aggressive warring aspect of Mars, you notice when you touch it and you get a rash, a hot, fiery rash on your skin, right? Um, so it indicates that element of it. And of course we can use nettle, we can make a nettle tea just by putting it in a bucket of water in the sun and let it sit outside and feed that to our plants to help fertilize them and nourish the soil. And so it's got that aspect as well. Mm -hmm. And nettle is also a really helpful support for the adrenal glands. And for that, I specifically <sighs> use the seeds of nettle, which don't come up until sort of August, September around here, the green seeds and just a very small amount will help to carry the adrenals and really support people who have adrenal fatigue. But most commonly with nettle, we use the uh, leaves mm -hmm. and they can be made into a tea. We're eating them a lot these days. They are a tremendous source of iron, you know, much like spinach, except like much more potent, like spinach times a hundred or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't know um, specifically, but, but very, very potent, um, strong source of iron. And so in terms of being able to absorb iron, um, so with, whenever we're dealing with um, mineral absorption in the body, 
uh, a really helpful thing to do is to extract those minerals in something acidic. So you can use like citrus, you can use like lemon juice. If you're making nettle tea, squeeze some lemon juice into that. Um, mm -hmm. Or I like to make herbal vinegars and people that have taken my classes know I'm really big on herbal vinegars to specifically to extract the minerals. So I love to put nettle into vinegar and another um, iron rich herb that I would use alongside with nettle to really build the blood is, uh, is yellow dock or curly dock. So for people that know that one um, and, um, and that one, it's the root that we use and it's, a it's very yellow on the inside, uh, which points to the yellow color kind of points to the bile and the liver and that kind of um, like moving that, energizing that, which is more of the destructive cleansing force of Mars. But um, it also is a tremendous blood builder. And so both of those nettle leaf and yellow dock root, either both together or separately, I would, um, I would put them chopped up in a jar and cover it with um, apple cider vinegar is usually what I use because that's good and alkalizing to the blood. Um, and let it extract for at least three weeks in a dark place so that the light doesn't degrade the quality of the plants. And then um, after that, strain it out and just take, you know, you can take like a teaspoon or two or three of that per day. Um, you can uh, add it to your salad dressings or, um, you know, put it in hot water. Some people like to have cider vinegar in hot water in the morning, maybe with a bit of honey to cleanse their system. So you could use this infused cider vinegar and it would have the effect of cleansing, alkalizing your system, but at the same time, it would also be nourishing your blood with iron and many other trace minerals. So the acidity, anything acidic draws minerals out and makes them much easier for us to absorb. And when we use apple cider vinegar, or if we use lemon juice too, um, they will also contribute a little bit to our stomach acid which then helps to trigger our whole digestive system, that feeling of acidity in the stomach, like, you know, to a healthy degree, not over acidity, which would be excessive Mars. Um, <laughs> but, right. uh, but like, you know, a healthy degree of acidity, it stimulates the rest of the digestive tract to turn on and start digesting and breaking things down um, so that we, we can access them and absorb them. So that's a big way that I would um, work to support the iron and therefore the blood uh, with the Mars aspect. And then, yeah, thinking about the nettle seeds, just adding a small amount. I like to take a small amount, like a pinch with honey um, daily, or that's what I would give to people who have some, need some adrenal support. And it's tremendous. It can be really helpful. And we also use the roots of nettle. And those are really, that's men's medicine. That's really Mars medicine in that it, it helps. Um, it's really supportive for uh, the prostate gland. If it's inflamed, it helps to bring it down. It can um, help to manage uh, reproductive health in, you know, but focusing specifically around that area, around the prostate um, for men. So it's, uh, it's like, it really focuses on that area of the core, the adrenal glands and the prostate, and then also the kidneys, which we, I didn't get into as much, but so really our core, that place where our, you know, our life force, our hara, our, our jing, <laughs> our chi comes from. And that's what, you know, like nettles really support that. And that's, you know, a big aspect of our, our Mars um, on a physical level. Cool. So, so, yeah. so that's for the iron. What if, if my adrenals, you know, what if I'm exhausted, then what, what can I do to support my adrenal? Right. So, well, I said, so the nettle seeds is a really big one. Just okay. the dried seeds I give on, on a spoon with a little bit of honey. You, if you're not sure, if you haven't tried it before, you take a pinch, that's it. Um, and just try that. For some people, that'll be too stimulating. And then you might need to do other things to support your adrenals before you move into nettle seeds. For some people, they won't feel much. And then you can take more. Like what I sometimes do is in the winter, I just sprinkle some, you know, more than a pinch, like, you know, up to a teaspoon uh, on my hot cereal in the morning and, and have it that way. And that's fine too. Um, uh, and I know yeah. some people extract them in oil because um, they are oily and it is the oils and the fats 
that really nourish the adrenals. Your adrenals are, are um, coated in fat. And this is an interesting thing because actually it makes me think of Mars and Venus again. Your adrenals are ruled by Mars. They're, you know, that energy, that life force that gets you going and responding to stress and able to handle it. But they need to be nourished and protected in order to function properly. And so healthy fats are really important for um, supporting your adrenals. And that of course is the Venus, the nourishing aspect that holds it, that holds you and allows you to feel relaxed and safe so that you can then express yourself in the world, right? So that, so it's, yeah, it's bringing healthy fats into your diet. And I know there are some herbalists that would say, sometimes what you need is ice cream. (laughs) <laughs> and, oh, you know, not something I would normally say, but I know that, you know, the, the fat and the milk and the sense of nourishment and abundance that comes from that, um, is then, and that allows you to relax. And it also can cool if there's excessive heat, like your adrenals are really overstimulated and it's too much. Um, it might not be the best idea to be taking in sugar and dairy, but for some people at the right time, that might actually be your medicine. And it's very Venusian. Ice cream is like Venus, right? Mm, Rich, fat, delicious, sweet, you know, (laughs) the cream. (laughs) So um, yeah, you know, thinking about, thinking about other healthy fats, like, um, uh, like coconut oil, avocados, um, right. you know, your he- like hemp seeds, hemp seed oil, um, nuts and seeds in general, and really focusing on making sure that you're getting those good healthy fats and not um, substituting like, you know, the craving that you will have for fats. If your adrenals are compromised, you will crave fats and you might crave sugar, which is probably actually more of a fat craving. Um, that you you deliver that you you satisfy that craving consciously with high quality fats. None of these you know more crappy vegetable oils uh, like uh, canola oils or um, you know right. or nothing with with uh, foods that have hydrogenated oils. No, never. And you might crave them, and subconsciously you're picking up something from the store that's like that's loaded with those because you're, you want a part of you wants it, but you want to make sure you're giving yourself the good fats, not the harmful fats that will actually. I'm, I'm re- this is all really amazing information and I'm taking notes and, and, and <laughs> again, uh, connect with Tamara. Um, her courses are amazing. If you're in Ontario, you, you know, and close to where she is, uh, you should definitely uh, check her, uh, her workout and, and her, her workshop series, but I know you do some work online as well. Um, so what's your, what's your website again? Hawthorne Herbals. Hawthorne, Hawthorne Herbal. Check it out. And then you also have a video channel, obviously. Um, um, you know, astrologically, I assign a lot of importance to this Mars-Jupiter conjunction that's coming Mm. up in Aries. I think that that a lot's going to unfold and that's going to come on the 29th and the 30th. The 30th is the the full moon, is the new moon and that's Mm. followed by Mercury turning direct. So, so, you know, Mm. I see a, a really powerful shift of energy first when mars comes into aries you know in in a few days here on the 24th and then on the 29th and the 30th the mars jupiter conjunction how does that feel and how does you know that that feels like completely the opposite of mars neptune right mars neptune feels like uh, uh and then mars jupiter feels like superhero and so how do we go, how do we go from, from, uh, from, you know, being so tired to kicking into superhero mode and how do we support our health to that? Yeah. That's a good question, isn't it? 
It is a good question. Uh, I mean, and 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 showing that when we were looking at those charts that you showed, um, that chart around the 29th, uh, which feel free to share it again if you uh, sure sure I'm getting it ready. Um, you know what stood out to me. So the 29th, you're looking okay over here. Yeah, we're with the Mars Jupiter conjunction. Yeah, right. um, and it's. And it's, uh, I guess it's it's around the new moon in in Taurus. So Mars and Jupiter conjunct in in uh, Aries, the very beginning of Aries. So first of all, um, or I mean, it's a few degrees in, but it's close to the beginning. Um, you know, the beginning of any sign. I associate with the energy of Mars because that's the sowing forth of the seeds. Now they're being strewn and they're taking root. And it's and it's got that forward energy, that active uh, force that that is carrying all of the energy of whatever wants to manifest in the time period of, of the influence of this sign. So we're already in this period that's kind of um, Mars influenced being at the beginning of Aries. And then of course, Mars is in Aries, the sign that it rules. So it's expressing itself really strongly. And then it conjoins with Jupiter, which expands and creates abundance and just like amplifies this energy even more. Now, I know you were mentioning uh, that that could relate to um, aggression because of course Mars has aggressive elements and Jupiter would amplify that. But looking at this conjunction and its relationship to everything involved, what I'm seeing mostly is actually like a lot of positive energy. I mean, uh, you know, already Mars is expressing itself in a healthy way in the sign that it rules that has to do with sending out seeds and growth and fertility. Right. And then and then it's um, it's it's trining or it's sextile uh, Pluto on the one side and then it's sextile the moon and Mercury on the other side and then moon and Mercury. Are, are trying each other are trying uh, Pluto and so we have this um, this nice beautiful blue triangle with Mars and Jupiter at the top and so it feels like actually Mars is going to be very supported there and Jupiter in Aries also I mean Jupiter expresses itself quite nicely in Aries for the most part so I'm feeling more like this could be a time where there will be an opportunity really to energize whatever uh, activities we want to be focusing on and, you know, to really maybe step more into our individuated selves. Everything that we've dreamed and that we've, um, you know, been working on internally over the winter months and right. also throughout this period, you know, maybe in this period that's kind of feels like delayed and Mars and Neptune are conjunct and everything's watery and not moving forward, that we can use this, the end of this period to allow whatever is showing up in our consciousness um, to kind of just for us to recognize it and to clarify more on a personal level without putting anything out into the world. What is it that I am dreaming of? What do I want to bring forth? What do I want to see? What do I want to participate in? What do I want to let burn up, float away, not be part of me? And then having the energy and the life force and the you know, the balls to move forward with it in uh, as Mars conjoins Jupiter and Aries. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, just, we just did a we just did a video on the on the the coming full moon. Uh, I mean, new moon. Sorry, on the on the thirtieth, and oh, nice. this 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 triangle that you're speaking of. You know, you can yeah. see it on the on the chart of the nineteenth. You can see it on the chart of the twenty fifth. It's it's this triangle there, Mercury Sun conjunction. You know, on the twenty first, you have the Mercury Sun conjunction. And it's in sextile to the Mars Neptune and and trying Pluto, 
and then and then it continues again you know all throughout uh, you know the these next 10 days mm. and and into uh, the other side of the new moon and then mercury turns retrograde uh, direct and then after that on the june 3rd saturn turns retrograde so we'll talk a lot about that uh, uh -huh. um, saturn turning retrograde and starting to move towards uranus again but as you were speaking you know there's a you know the ingress of uh, venus into taurus and all the four planets in the Taurus as that Jupiter Mars conjunction happens. So I think that that um, also resonates and and, mm -hmm. and feels really good. You know, Venus and Taurus is going to be a very creative time. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. It's it it's not necessarily negative. I think that that with Mars and, and, and Jupiter in Aries, um, one would have to be careful not to overdo things, huh? Yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh, but it does feel like there's a sense of balance. So certain people would have to be careful not to overdo things. People who have challenged adrenals, people who already have a lot of planets, particularly if you have Mars in Aries, it might be a little much. You might do well to make efforts to balance out all that energy by, you know, taking it slow, uh, taking some time for yourself, some quiet meditation time or something, some, some more internal self-care uh, and making sure you're nourishing and these kinds of things during that time. Um, but, you know, as a follow up to this dissipated Mars Neptune conjunction, I think it'll feel really good. And, and with Venus moving into Taurus, that's a really good point. So, so we have Venus and Mars both in their um, ruling signs, and it feels very fertile. It feels like, yeah, a lot of things can take shape. In, in my I, in, in yeah. my analysis and in my work with people, I've been working for a long time with people that were really challenged in their relationships. And mm. I find that there's breakthroughs in that more harmony. You know, we, we, uh, in the, in the winter and at the big, and at the, at the late fall there, we had the Venus Mars conjunction huh? and Venus and Mars travel together from in from fall into winter and they were in conjunction like almost for four you know four or five weeks there they traveled together yeah. you know and that was a really difficult time for relationships and a lot mm -hmm. of time of reassessing and now it seems like we're finding our way a little more um it's definitely easier to be in relationships now and then and then, uh, you know, the, the, you know, that's what I look forward to with Mars coming into Aries is a better sense of, of, of my ability to express the masculine side of my personality in a safe way. Um, yeah. And so not, you know, not to, to, you know, healing the masculine archetype in our society is very, very difficult to, you know, and we were talking about that before we press record. Oh, how <clears throat> how challenging it is to really, you know, express masculinity in a healthy way. And so, in that sense, Mars Jupiter conjunction in Aries could be a really beautiful example of expressing masculine energy in a beautiful way. Uh, respecting you know the, the 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 Taurus the Venus archetype as well yeah you know um it's making me think maybe I'll give a uh make mention of some other some good stuff I've been taking in um I uh I really appreciate the work of um Pat McCabe for those of you who might might know of her she's um she is such a beautiful inspiration. She is um, an elder from, uh, well, I know she's part of the Lakota tradition and also is um, 
um, Dine born. Um, so Southwestern US and uh, she just does so much good work and uh, you can find her work like she's interviewed a lot on podcasts and she writes and um, so uh, a lot of her work has focused on um, the uh, actually supporting the masculine um, in these times and um, there's this fabulous interview that she did on another really great uh, podcast that relates to this, which is called The Mythic Masculine by, um, I think his name is Ian McKenzie, but I might be wrong about that, but something like that. Anyways, The Mythic Masculine podcast. So he's really exploring the masculine element in modern times and um, and just talking about it in reference to all sorts of different, talking about it in relation to the sacred feminine, but also a lot of different, um, you know, men that are doing work related to this in different ways. And um, it was like, it was a few years ago now that she was interviewed on that podcast, but she, it was amazing. The talk about the state of masculinity now and, you know, all these concern, all of these issues that everybody has about the patriarchy and the problems of the patriarchy and, and, and how we're trying to heal them. And they relate to everybody. And we all need to look at how we've been controlling and how we've been racist and how we've been all these things. And um, taking that, stepping back from that and looking at how the patriarchy is wounding everybody and the men have been victims of it just as much as the women have and they've been forced into these roles and that it's not even so much um the problem um the 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 patriarchy it's the paradigm that we're living in which is basically a power over paradigm where one you know um might makes right and whoever's the strongest you know rules over the others and within that paradigm men are physically stronger than women so they're going to be the dominant ones and then they're forced into these dominant roles and she talks about the wounding of the masculine through the witch hunts in europe and like how that wounding has carried itself all the way through to now and um, that all of that needs to heal and that we could move out of this paradigm of power over into a paradigm of thriving life where everybody has an opportunity to thrive and uh, we support that instead of, you know, the, um, the ones that are the strongest win and take power over and dictate over the others. So this is an issue of Mars, right? Mars is this energy that's strong and forceful and it can have power over and it can be very destructive but i feel like mars also is the child that wants everybody to play together that wants you know like aries is, is it's the child it's this youthful energy of and there's an innocence to it it could be thrown into being the power over you know playing with power and this sort of thing. Um, but ultimately that's coming from a place of innocence, not really of, you know, wanting it, to. It's interesting how huh? whenever you, uh, you, you, you see charts with the strong Mars Jupiter connections, you know, like mm -hmm. a Mars Jupiter uh, conjunction or Mars Jupiter opposition or a square, <clears throat> any kind of strong Mars Jupiter aspects usually translates into incredible leadership qualities. Mm. Um, you know, you you know the the captain of the team comes up often. Uh, right. You know, in a Mars Jupiter, and so you know, as you were talking, and and you know, in reflection to. To, to where we've been today in, in this in this visit is is really a need to have a different relationship with the Mars archetype in 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 healing our masculine side and our masculine expression and that you know is just as important for a man as it is for a woman to have a, a healthy relationship with Mars 
And I think that this particular conjunction of Mars Jupiter will give us an opportunity to express our, you know, the masculine side of our personality in a um, in a leadership role, you know, and, and that that's really what we need, you know, we need healthy leaders that that have a, not only a re healthy relationship with their feminine side, but also with their masculine side. And so, right. so that, that really puts a very, very beautiful twist on that Mars-Jupiter conjunction. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I, you know, it, it seems like maybe this period that we had through the winter and early spring of Mars and Venus being conjunct and traveling together all this time, you know, it provided an opportunity for a sharing of energies, but also with that sharing meant that there was in some cases some conflict because you're a little too close and, you know, and then now every they're separated and everybody's about to move into their their power role where they can express themselves healthfully. Maybe this has all been process, a process of allowing what needs to die to fall away in the archetype of the masculine, the archetype of the feminine that we all carry so that we can express them in healthier ways that allow for everybody to individuate to express themselves as themselves and to right. not feel censored and to not feel that they're overpowered um you know right. but yeah uh, that's that's exciting i like looking at it in that way absolutely absolutely you know and the last time that mars was in aries mm -hmm. uh was uh you know last year and Mars was in Aries for six months last year. Right. Because of retrogradation. Retrograde, yeah. And 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 that Aries Mars made three exact square to the Saturn Pluto Jupiter uh, conjunction, you know, that was really, really key to the evolution of our crisis, you know. So so I think with the Mars returning into Aries and conjuncting Mars this time, and towards uh, the end of Mars in Aries, Mars will be in a square to Pluto. And right. so we'll have to look at that and follow the movement of Mars. And so we'll do another video on that in, in, in this. Uh, but um, I really like this, um, this, um, because in my own process, I know that I have to have a healthier relationship with uh, with with Mars, not as a as an abuser warrior, but as a farmer healer kind of dude, you know. And so, so um, yeah. But in a sense, also as a warrior for what is right, huh? And and that may be that the way we express that best is in in the in a healer archetype in a in a way of of uh looking at the manifesting uh the divine masculine in a in in a in a, in a better he healthier way huh? what a what an interesting way to leave this this discussion or to or to meditate on that for all of our viewers and for ourselves huh? Yeah, I really appreciate that you brought it back to the um, Jupiter Saturn conjunction um, uh, with with Pluto there that that happened in in the end of December of uh, 2020 that brought us into 2021. And and that, of course, was it, it, when we've talked about it before, and I know you've talked about it a lot. It was the, the heralding of this new era that that will last for about 20 years. And so to go back to look at the bigger theme of what's going on and how that might be playing into what's happening more into the minutia of the transits today, you know, one of the one of the things about looking at um, these close planets like Mars and Venus, Mercury, you know, 
they, you know, like I was saying earlier, like I do feel like they have more to do with what's going on in the day to day and with what's conscious and what we're engaging with, um, you know, whereas the, the further away planets are, are, are affecting bigger periods of time and generations and they might be affecting things that are happening below the surface a little more. So with uh, Mars, we can get, you know, fixated on what's going on here. We can get, you know, like a little myopic and not, um, you know, see the the bigger picture and our place within it and it's so helpful and this is one of the ways that I think astrology is so helpful we have these maps and we can look back and say okay we're in this bigger process that's been going on for a while and will continue for a while and we're at this stage within it so how does whatever's happening for me right now play into all of that and what was happening for me at the end of December, 2020, when we moved into 2021 and how can I relate that to this passage right now? And then, you know, it just enriches our experience. So absolutely, can... absolutely. How beautiful. And, and, and what, uh, you know, so we, we, we looked at it back and then, and then if we spin it forward a little bit, I'm really looking forward well, you know, I have my Mars in Gemini myself, and then the mm -hmm. sun is about to enter into Gemini, and Mercury has been retrograde in Gemini, moved out into Taurus, but we'll be back into Gemini. And uh, later on this year, uh, Mars will come into Gemini and will turn retrograde in Gemini and will spend seven months in Gemini. And, mm -hmm. and so we'll have to talk about that too, because I think that that's going to be very, very significant in, um, in the expression, you know, because that's what it is. Huh? It's just that we have to learn to express Mars in a healthier way in our own process. And so, so in a Mars in Gemini, I think that's a, that's going to be that those seven months there are going to be great times to write a book. <laughs> well, Mars, you know, if you have a writing project, mm -hmm. Mars and Gemini for seven months, take it's advantage of that. Placement. And you and I both have Mars and Gemini. So this is another connection we have with our charts. But uh, so it will be interesting for both of us, and it'll probably give us a lot more uh, energy behind our expression if we make videos too <laughs> um, during that time. So yeah, it would be really interesting to focus on. And I think the idea around um, expression in general too, like, you know, because Mars is the active and it's putting things out there. And then Gemini ruled by Mercury is all about communication. So when we have Mars and Gemini, it's activating that communication. Um, it's very exciting. And I think, you know, it really resonates with us. Anybody who has uh, a Gemini sun or a Gemini rising or a bunch of planets in Gemini will experience this a lot. Or if they have a strong um, influence of Mercury in their chart, I think they'll, they'll find... Um, that the Mars Mars's transit through Gemini will will have a strong effect on them, particularly around the area of communication. And you know, when we're talking about the struggle of Mars, it's like Mars wants to be active and communicate. It's this masculine force that is also sort of being attacked because if you're like you know if you're like a white male, you you can't you know you can be attacked because the patriarchy, because racism, because all these things are coming up and we need to be fair and we need to break them down and all these things. But as part of that, you can feel censored when actually you have something to say and we need to hear it. And these issues of censorship are so uh, prominent right now. People are feeling right. like they need to censor themselves or people are speaking out and then they're getting canceled. And, um, you know, and other people are, you know, feeling like certain things shouldn't be shared. And yet we all have something to express and that what we have to share to express might actually be really significant for all of us moving forward. So hopefully that transit of Mars through Gemini will allow all of us collectively to look at the issue of expression and censorship and kind of allow, you know, in that arena, the aspects of that that need to die to die and the aspects that need to come out and be expressed to come forward. I, I think that would bring a lot of healing 
for all of humanity. Absolutely. And let's hope that the, that process has started with this Mars-Jupiter conjunction and yes. that we can take uh, healthy steps towards expressing our masculine leadership, both as women and as men. Exactly. Yeah. And creating a much healthier society. I think that uh, I was uh, watching uh, uh, um, Julia Panessi um, doing an interview with Robert Kennedy Jr. And uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. said, you know, in terms of waiting for a hill to die on, this is it, you know, we kind of have to really become incredible examples of good masculine leadership and good feminine leadership in that sense too, you know, uh, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to stem the tide of uh, craziness that's going on in the collective right now. It's uh, really concerning. To individuate, to really connect with our own inner voice, to hear it, uh, you know, beyond the noise. And when the time is right, to express it, because that's our responsibility for the collective, even if it's scary, even if it means you might get canceled, this, that, all these things, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that sounds like that was really well put. Um, yeah. I always uh, so enjoyed our conversation and I got yeah. so many realizations out of this and also to support my own system and, and, uh, and thinking that I, we need to put more effort into keeping, you know, keeping uh, abreast with the, the movements of Mars and Venus and so maybe next time we can talk about Venus. I like that idea. All right, uh, we will plan for that. And uh, and also, you know, we can we can leave it open for for any of the viewers if anyone has uh, particular things that you think it would be interesting for us to chat about. You know, throw them in the comments. We're happy to hear. But I, I like talking about Venus next. It seems like a smooth transition for us. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Uh, the engagement of the viewer is so important uh, mm. in, in finding your voice. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to our channels. Uh, uh, Hawthorne Herbals uh, for Tamara, uh, the Healer and Dreamer Astrology for me. Um, comment, ask questions, uh, like the video, share them. Uh, this is how we grow and you have a big part in uh, to play in that. Um, thank you so much, Tamara, for this beautiful visit. Thank you, Martin. It's always a pleasure. And I also got a lot of richness and uh, food for thought and ideas from it. So we will definitely do it again. Um, thank you for initiating it. That was a good, that was a good Martian kind of move. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. We'll talk soon. Okay. Big love. <laughs> All right.